Alléluia. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus for helping us. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus for helping us. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for your help. If you know that Jesus Christ helped you, say, Lord, thank you for your help. If you recognize that the Lord Jesus helped you, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your help. The Lord says, We cannot serve two masters at the same time. That you will love one and you will hate the other. If the desire of your heart are not set on Jesus Christ, Regardless what he gives to you, your love for him will not grow. He says, listen, he said, when I come on earth, will I find faith? Hmm. The Lord Jesus who knows all. He's asking a question that he has the answer already. When I come on earth, will I find faith? He said, because the love of many will do what? Wax cold. He did not say they won't love me. But that love will decrease to a point that they will just tolerate me. Say, Lord, I will not let my love wax cold I refuse to let my love for you wax cold you see the things that makes our love for Christ wax cold is the world is the world the world the richesses of the world the deceitfulness of the world is the world The distractions in the world. I used to say this, and I keep on saying the same. If you watch football or soccer more than you pray, then you know your love was cold. If you watch more base, I say baseball, right? I will say that baseball. Then you pray. Your love for Christ has waxed cold. If you watch more movies than you pray, your love for Christ has waxed cold. You may not always go to the mountain to pray, but you can pray everywhere. Hallelujah. You may not go to the Mountains to pray, but you are called to pray everywhere, every time. Last Sunday, the Lord reminded us that we ought to flee from sin. Hallelujah. We have to run away from it. Children of God, let me tell you why. He blessed and increased and prospered King Saul. But King Saul did not learn to run from sin. That same blessing turned around and killed him. The heart of man, the word of God says, is deceitfully wicked. 
That's why you have to every day check. What is the increase inside of you that makes you want to follow Christ? He is a God who gives. He is a God who prospers. But why are you following him? This morning I was praying. And then the Lord reminded me something. And I said, ah, Jesus. I see that in many churches, when people do not come to church, they use all kinds of uh, eh? excuses and, and reasons. But on the other side also, the people of the church, meaning the leaders and so forth, they also use all kinds of stratagem and strategies to cause people to come. And then this morning, I was meditating on this one. I said, Lord, what shall we do? The answer he gave, gave me just struck me. He said, if they go, ask to those who are there if they want to go also. I said, ah. And he sent me back in John chapter 6. There were 70 disciples. They were not unbelievers. They were disciples, believers of God, of Christ. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 10, that they were also sent two by two just as the 12. But it came a time, as they were following Christ, they were not at peace or at ease with the teachings that had to take them from baby teaching to adult teaching. The Bible said they left him. So I was thinking and the Lord said I let them go. Because if you pull somebody who does not want to come you yourself you will be drained before the person is tired. And he says, in my mystery of my kingdom, I did not come for people. I came for the lost. I did not come to please people. I came for the lost. That is why the Pharisee were over there and the prostitute was over there. And then he went for the prostitute. He left, he left the, 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 the Pharisee. And yet the Pharisee were sinners. As my arch, the prostitute. But the prostitute recognized that she was lost and she needed him. So I said, Lord, so why is that your people don't see your manifestation? He said, because they have become acquainted. And that word resonated in me. The Bible said when he went to his own, he could not do what? Many miracles. Why? Because they were acquainted to him. And that word this morning struck me. And I said, Lord, what is the root of it? He said, because the love has wax cold. Every time I pray for increase in prosperity and finances and wealth, I always see in the corner the devil ready to also push your heart to pride. Push your heart to lie. Push your heart to deceit. See, the devil came to the Lord Jesus and he said, Worship me, and I will give you all the treasure of the world. God wants to prosper you. 
That is his word. For he says, I will increase you and multiply you. But what is the purpose if this will cause your soul? Oh, Lord Jesus. Does somebody understand that hell has nothing to do with nightmare? The fear of God, when it departs from someone's heart, you become acquainted to God. Hmm. By prayer, just as the prayer of the Lord in John 17, he prayed that you will remain in the word. He prays that you will remain in the word. For he says, if you are following me, continue in my word. And if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Somebody who is not free, first and foremost, does not know the truth. He does not know the truth because he's not a disciple. He is not a disciple because he does not continue in the word of God. He said, whatever that is noble, that is pure, set your mind on those things. He said, set your affections into the things on high. Let me tell you how you love Christ. When you love him, not only you keep his word, but you want to see him. You want him all the time. There's a question. When is the last time that you have uh, asked to the Lord, when are you coming back? Because you see, a husband and a wife who loves each other will ask the person, when are you coming back? And when there is no love, go, stay over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you can perish if you want. But when there is love, there is a missing. You feel what I'm saying? The busyness of life will cause your love to wax cold. And you must refuse it. That to somebody, you must refuse it. You must refuse it. We cannot teach you Jesus Christ or put Jesus Christ in your heart. You can only hear, believe, and be transformed. But when you are transformed, the Bible says you are to, you yourself, you must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling knowing that your king seated on the throne that he watches over you at this point you are not afraid of what men can do to you because you know that your king who watches over you also takes care of you do you want God in your life? Hallelujah. How much of Christ do you want inside your bones, inside your veins? How much of him? Because Christ has to be your bloodline, your bloodstream. Those who know the Lord, 
they run unto him. They seek to please him. And he in turn seek to also bless them. Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all those things will be added. The same God who has called you for you to become the head and not the tail. The same God who called you for you to become a lender and not a borrower. The same God says, love me first. Love me first and watch what I shall do in your life. Love me first and watch how I shall do in your life. Do not be caught up. Do not be caught up into the many activities of this world. Do not be caught up into the many things of this world. Because listen, my brethren, when we have run that race and we have finished to run the race, but we haven't done as he has wished and pleased and will, where are we going? When we have finished to run this race, and we present ourselves before him, what shall we say? Are you know what I'm saying? If you have your marriage for yourself, you will do your marriage for yourself. But if you have it for God, in your marriage, you will please God. If you have your business for yourself, you will do your business for yourself. But if you have it for God, in that you will please God. If you have your children, same thing. But if it's for God, you will please God through them. Are you what I'm saying? How much of Jesus Christ you want? How much of Jesus Christ? You need continually in your bones. You have to come in a place where it's like a, a, a like, like uh, 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 l'appareil de respiration, how we call it. Huh? How we say that? Life support. Yeah, breathing life support. Because you know you cannot breathe without Christ. You cannot breathe without the Lord Jesus Christ if you are born again. Because the Bible said that you are born of the Spirit. And what makes you be is no longer the flesh and the blood, but it is the Spirit of God. And you have to be connected to that Spirit like a charger is connected to the cell phone. Are you following what I'm saying? If you want to see your battery 100% charge, it must be connected. From the moment you disconnect, even if you have charge, you will see, you will decrease. Most of the time when you have a cell phone and it is unplugged, you use it because you see 100% charge. But before you realize, when you see it's 2%, by the time you say, oh, it's, it's over, it's, it's just shut down. The Bible tells us in the book of Jude that, beloved, charge your most holy faith. Charge, like you plug it. Charge your most holy faith. Praying in the spirit. 
charge it. I pray that today be not another Sunday. I pray that today will not be another Sunday. I pray that uh, you will not and we will not look this as another Sunday. This is an opportunity that we having to revive the fire. You cannot miss it. Are you following? You cannot miss it. Take a cat. They say that a cat does not like to go into the water, right? But there are some cats that go in water. I have seen cats plunge as a plunge and dive in water. I was amazed. I thought it was a tiger. This cat, they have defied the law of the cats. That's your case. Your flesh cannot help you fulfill the law of God. Every man is like a cat. They are afraid to be wet with the power of God, with the love of God. To follow the ways of God. But you got to put at the place, defy the law of the flesh and enter by the spirit and turn things around. Galilee 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 hmm. Galilee 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 Hallelujah Amen I bless the name of God Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Please give me the word of God today. You cannot serve God and Mammon. So let's take the book of Luke chapter 16. We're going to read from verse 1 to 13. The book of Luke chapter 16 we're going to read from verse 1 through 13. The word of God. Hallelujah. And he said. And he, he said, said. Also unto his disciples. Also unto his disciples. There was a certain rich man. Mm -hmm. Which had a steward. Mm -hmm. And the same was accused unto him. Uh -huh. That he had washed his goods. Wasted. Or wasted his goods. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. How many of you have been wasting the goods of God? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You have to ask a question. You know what's wasted the good of God is? Let me give you an example. God gave you the word, right? You have the word of God in you. That's a good. And then you talk with somebody and the person sinfully acts. And sinfully behave. But all you do is, okay, 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 okay. But you don't tell to the person about that good or the truth of God. You wasted it. Let me repeat again. You have the word of God in you. 
you know the truth. And you see and talk with somebody who's acting foolishly and speaking rubbish. And all you do, okay, 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 bye-bye. You wasted the good. Because you are also called to be a witness, amen? Not only a disciple. You are called to also be a witness. Let's continue. Verse 2. Mm. And he and the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. Verse 3. Then the steward. Verse 4. I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? Verse 6. And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Let us spot here for a moment before we continue. And the Lord in a uh, um, lowercase l, so for that, um, for that master of that person. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in the generation wiser than the children of light. Can you give me that in Amplify, please? Look. Chapter 16, verse 8, Amplified. And the master commanded the unjust manager, not for his misdeed, but because he had acted shrewdly by preparing for his future unemployment. For the sons of this age, the non-believers, are shrewder in relation to their own kind, that is, to the ways of the secular world, than are the sons of light, the believers. Hallelujah. Amen. The people, what this word says is that the people of the world, they know how to use strategy in order to position themselves. They know how to use different operation and administration among themselves in order never to fall or to fall down. So the Lord Jesus is making first a first level comparison. There are two levels. The first one addresses the comparison of wealth. And the second level addresses the comparison of spiritual life. So I will address the two levels, but we start with the level of wealth, which is money, possession. So it says in that, in, in that, in that world, the children of the world, they know and they understand that if they have used strategies among themselves, they will always have favor and they will be able to help each other. Hmm. Let me explain, for instance. Let me explain. You will understand this one. When a children of the world wants to have, oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Say, I refuse that the children of the world be wiser than me. I refuse that the children of the world be wiser than me. So let me give you an example. In the world, the guy can use deceit or bribery in order to make his business go. Are you what I'm saying? 
So he used all type of bribery because he knows he will have the favor back. But the children of light, they don't understand that it is a principle. In the world, that principle, they use it, but they use it in the wrong way. Let me explain. When you saw you, amen? When you saw you, So the children of the world, they know that they have to invest somewhere in order to receive when they are broke or when they are in difficulties. So they help each other. The children of light, they don't understand that principle and they don't apply that principle for their own kind. The word of God says in Proverbs, whosoever giveth to the poor, when he will have problem, that we give to him too. But whosoever does not give it, <laughs> when he has problem, he will stay alone. So the children of the world have understood that they can help each other so because they know that tomorrow they may have some kind of favor among themselves. It is the Lord Jesus saying it. That is why from the first level, which is wealth, if you don't buy and you don't trade among yourself, children of God, order will not trade with you. I said two levels. Wealth, so physical, and second level, spiritual. So I will dress first the wealth, physical, and then we will go on the spiritual. Let me repeat it again. The Lord says, whatever you want order to do unto, do it to. I read again. Whatever you want others to do unto, you do it to others. So what it means is that if you want to see something happening on your side, you have to use the strategy so that you start sowing on the other side. Does it make sense? Wealth or prosperity does not come by prayer only. Tell to your neighbor. It does not come by prayer only. When God blessed Abraham, hallelujah, it was not spiritual things. Hallelujah. He blessed him also with the physical things. And those physical things he blessed him with, they were palpable. He could touch it. He could hold it. It was not a prayer. That, yeah, because the children of the Lord, they, they just pray. And they don't know how to act. And they're asking themselves, the Lord Jesus help us. Let me give you an example. Your master is the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Your first place of work is where? Huh? No, what you say? The kingdom. You are hired, you are called, your first place of duty is a kingdom. Does somebody understand that? He goes along with first seek the kingdom of God. As much as the same, your first place of duty is a kingdom. Because your master is not the devil. Your master is the Lord Jesus and he has a kingdom. So you start already by understanding or seeking how to operate in his kingdom. There are two ways of operating the kingdom of Christ. By Sowing into the kingdom with your finances or by, uh, I would say that, piché, by fishing men. 
You don't fish, man. You don't sow. You do what? Are you know what I'm saying? You, you don't do one. You don't need the other. But you pray that the master of the kingdom will give you your share. Say, I refuse it. Your first master, again, your first place of duty is the kingdom of your master, of your father. Let me tell you why. Because if you don't serve correctly your father, that you serve out better than you serve your father, outside that we give you, but it will come with sorrow. You know what I'm saying? That we give you, but it will come with many sorrows. For it is a blessing of the Lord that maketh one rich and had it, no sorrow with it. Ask yourself, in the kingdom of my master, what do I do? You have two things. This man, he dealt with money. Are you know what I'm saying? With wealth of his, of his master. In the kingdom of Christ, the first wealth is people. The heart of men. So he said, I have called you to be fishers of men. If you cannot go to fish men, you must make sure that you invest into the one who goes to fish men. So first level, wealth. Still in the kingdom, what the Lord Jesus is asking of you because your master is the one who tells you. There were, in the case of her, in the, in, even in the case of the Lord Jesus, the Bible said there were some women who were also in the ministry, right? Many. And the Bible said they were doing what? The substance. They were supporting with substance. So even though they could not go, some of them, to announce, but they were making sure that at least the disciple was able to eat to go announce. It is a principle. Make sure that you value the kingdom of your father. So you are not like Absalom who is in the kingdom of his father, but I want to be the king. Hallelujah. The second level, let's continue, please. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And verse 8. And his master commanded the unjust manager not for his misdeed, but because he had acted shrewdly by preparing for his future unemployment. For the sons of this age, the non-believers, are shorter in relation to their own kind, that is, to the ways of the secular world, than are the sons of the light, the believers. Verse 9. And I tell you, learn from this. Make friends for yourselves for eternity by means of the wealth of unrighteousness, that is, use material resources as a way to further the work of God, so that when it runs out, they will welcome you into the eternal dwelling. Okay, let me explain that for you quickly. It simply tells us that whatever you get outside from Mammon, you cannot invest it back 
in Mamon. He says, learn from this, make friends for yourself for eternity by means of the wealth of unrighteousness. Many of you, you don't work for some Christians or for some pastors. You work for atheists, for, <laughs> for unbelievers, for, for uh, all kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? But when they give to you, it says make sure that you use material resources as a way to further the what? Is that me saying it? If you are not yourself, fishing men, you must make sure that uh, you invest in the kingdom of your father. And the reason why this can be difficult for you to do is not because you do not want to do. It's because your flesh is stronger than your spirit. You need to learn to bring your flesh under subjection. Let me tell you something. <laughs> let, me, let me help you with this one. You pray that God will bless you so that uh, you will further the kingdom of God. And God said, liar. You know why? <laughs> Let me explain to you why. Because back then, you did not even have money to pay your transportation with the bus. God took you, he looked you up a little bit, poo. And then now you were able to have at least transportation for your bus. And after he took you from there, he left you poop. And now you are able to have transportation for your, for your friend's bus. And he took you, are you know what I'm saying? At every stage, he lift you up a little bit. But the lack of recognizing what God is doing already always makes you say that when you bless me, I will bless you. And yet you were already blessed. This is a demonstration of being on. Grateful. Because he says, the one who is faithful in the what? You know what Lilo means in Greek? It means things that you don't even value. Things that you even take it like a, like what we say for safarian. Eh? For granted. He said, be faithful there. Hmm. Let me tell you, some of you, you came in America. As I always say, when you were in Africa, they give you 50,000 French CFA. You think that you have arrived to Rome. <laughs> Imagine your first time, when you had your first salary. Somebody say, preach to me. Say, tell me the truth. You, as I say, we're going to deal with two levels. Because the children of the world, they understand that principle better than the children of the light. And God says, they prosper by doing so. And you are still struggling. Somebody has to tell you exactly why. Let me elaborate. So you were... Down there. The first time you had your first salary, imagine where you were still at school. You had your first salary. I remember in those days, my first salary was 75,000 French CFA. I thought I became the president of the United States. <laughs> I was working in Abidjan with 75,000 French CFA. It's roughly about... He bought like an eighty dollar, like like eight, no, not eighty, uh, uh, one twenty five dollar. So I thought I've arrived. I was earning one twenty five dollar a month. 
No hay ven agua. <laughs> I told y'all every hour. And when 30 days have passed, they put in my hand $125. I said, praise the Lord. And so the Lord has taken me from one place to another. And he brought me in a place where I was now able to have 500,000. And I was able to have one million. Hey, I thought like now this, this time I became now the queen, <laughs> not to say the king. <laughs> Until the Lord now taught me when I finally gave my heart to him that he was blessing me for two reasons. To build his kingdom. Not with words, but to build his kingdom both in words and in deeds. The children of the world are wiser than the children of light because they understand how to trade. So your first place of trade is the kingdom of God. Your time, your resources, your faith, Let me put it this way. You want to see your church grow, but you don't evangelize. Amen? And if you come, oh Lord, increase. Amen? But go evangelize. You know what I'm saying? Because the children of the world, they evangelize. Do you understand that? How do they do it? They do uh, commercial. They do outreach. They do marketing. They do uh, 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 you name it. Are you following what I'm saying? Your kingdom, the kingdom of your father is your place of abode. Is somebody following me? You must tell to others what God not only is doing, but tell them where God is doing it. Put it this way. When you have problem, and then you call your brother or your sister, it's because you may think that there is a solution or a counseling that will be given to you. You know what I'm saying? How many people outside they are looking for it? They have nobody to call. Many people are looking. They don't know where to go. But if you will tell them who the Lord is and how to find him and how to grow in him, you might become a good worker of the kingdom of God. But you don't do it. And then, when you come in his church, in his kingdom, in his house, in your bank account, you have 50 100, 200 thousand dollars. Somebody say amen. <laughs> and then you give to the Lord 20 dollars for the children church. Tell me, 200 thousand dollars per 20 dollars. How many percent is this? You you can you, you, you don't even know mathematics. <laughs> Hallelujah. Zero 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 one percent. I want to 
to speak to you as children. You cannot expect God to reward you when you are not giving him what is precious for you. Your time, your life, your, your strength, your words, your mouth, your feet. But here's the thing. God is not a bad God. Amen? He's a good father. He sees what you do that does not please him, but he bless you anyway. He gives you breath of life and bread to eat. So you understand that uh, you must also do as he does. Uh, hallelujah. But you cannot for long be doing so. In the world, they're not to trade. Hmm. In Christ, in the kingdom, he said, Whosoever soweth sparingly shall reap. Is that me saying that? Give me the verse, please. Give me the verse. Whosoever soweth sparingly shall also reap just as he has sown, which is sparingly. Whosoever giveth cheerfully, God loveth a cheerful giver. Do we have that on the word? Yeah, put it on the screen for me, please. Second Corinthians 19. Start, start, from, start from me even from verse 1. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. It means normally... He should not even write you those things. He should not even tell you those things because you should have already known it by the simple doctrine of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue. Verse 2. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that a child was ready a year ago, and your zeal had provoked very many. Hallelujah. Amen. Those people, they were able to truly invest in the kingdom of God. The zeal. And this has caused other people to also want to honor God the same way. Hallelujah. Continue. Verse 3. Yet have I sent the brethren... Lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, as I said, he may be ready. Hold on a second. You don't understand the principle of the kingdom. You see, for the child, for Jacob, I said Jacob, for Esau, to be blessed, his father told him what? Go, hunt, and do what? And cook the good cook that you usually do. And bring me that good food. So my soul may bless you. You don't understand the kingdom. Oh, Lord help them. Let, let me back up, okay? And I will talk you as a pagan. I will talk you as a native so you understand better. If I want to have a job... I pay money, I corrupt them, I bribe them so they can give me a position in a job. I, 
I, have you ever heard that? I want to have visa. I bribe them, I corrupt them so I can have visa. Have you ever heard that? I have to want paperwork. I go marry with somebody I never saw, so I have paperwork. Have you ever heard, heard that? I want money. I go sleep with a man or a woman to have money, and I tell him, ah, my daddy is dead, my uncle is dead, my auntie is dead, just because I wanted the money. I, have you ever heard that? The world knows how to attract what they need. So God says, if you want to attract that same law, you must also operate in that law. Because the law of sowing is reaping. The law of reaping is not praying. Let me say that again. The law of reaping is what? Sowing. That law is not made for the Christian. It's made by God for the world. Period. For the earth. For the creation. So whether you are a Christian, whether you are not a Christian, regardless, that law says you saw you. That's why you see Muslim there. Reap. You see ATS there. Reap. Let me, let me help you with this one. Have you ever been in a situation where you do not have much, but there was something you needed, and you sacrificed yourself, you bought it? Have you ever been in a situation like that? Let me repeat again. Because if you are not true to yourself, you can never be true to God anyway. Have you ever been in a situation you needed something? Or let me take an example. You were in Africa, you need to pay, pay for, your, for, your, for your airplane. The last money you had, you collected it until you paid that ticket airplane because you need to travel. You, you know what I'm saying? So you are ready for some things that has to do with your arm to sacrifice, even if it is your last. When it comes to God, for the kingdom, hmm, if I give, I will not have. <laughs> you know what I'm saying and God said with that type of mindset it will be difficult for you to even reap because he says those who sow bountifully risk bountifully but you want to pray bountifully to reap bountifully I say brother it's not like that See, every time people pray, Lord, I give you my life. I give you all by my pocket. Please leave it with me. <laughs> Somebody say, yeah, I tell the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. I give you all. You are my all. But continue. Verse, verse 4. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Let's happily, let's apply, happily, apply it, happily. 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 Mm. Let's happily, if they are Macedonia, come with me and find you unprepared. We that we say not, he should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Do you understand? Apostle Paul was saying that. There's people that were a kind of giver. They were givers so much that he was telling about them to other people to say, hey, these people, they support the work of God. He could count on them. When there was something, he said, this church, ah, oh, they are ready to give unto the Lord because they truly serve God. So he finished to boast to other churches, say, ah, when you go to this place over there, they will be ready because the love of God is manifested in vain in their deeds. So he says, when they come, please make sure that the, what we say about you will not be a shame for us.
in the kingdom. How much can God tell of you that indeed you are ready? You are ready for him. Are you feel what I'm saying? How much can the Lord tell of you you are ready for him? Continue. Verse 5. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they will be that they will go before unto you and make you beforehand your bounty, whereof he had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as a covetousness. Mm. Verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So for me there. Is that word of God has still yet penetrated your mind and your heart and your soul and your spirit? God says, if you love me, you go in heaven. If you don't love me, you don't go in heaven. And people say, I don't love you. I want to go in heaven. <laughs> he said, if you follow me, you leave. If you don't follow me, you die. People don't follow him, but they want to leave. He said, if you saw bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. People don't sow bountifully, but they want to reap bountifully. You remember the word of God in Malachi? It says that uh, you rob me. If God calls you robber, you are you are in you are in trouble. Hallelujah. If the Lord calls you robber, you are in trouble. He says the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. The children of darkness, they can give what they have among themselves because they know tomorrow you will be an exchange of wealth. When somebody has a company, he will deal with another one who can also buy and trade. Are you what I'm saying? So that uh, he does favor because he knows tomorrow he will also ask the favor back. They understand that principle. So God says, in me, in my kingdom, you must use the principle of what you put down, we, we, we grow back. You know, some of you, you were too Catholics. <laughs> you know, in the Catholic church, we have been taught very many, many things. That no, blessed are the poor in heart. They shall see God. <laughs> so many of us, when we're in Catholic, we were praying, Lord, don't make me rich. Don't make me poor. Give me just my daily bread. <laughs> <laughs> Foolishness. In the kingdom of God, in the word of God, he gave it so that you can expand his kingdom. Not so that you can boast that you have. So he said, who will trust you the true riches if you are unfaithful with the last? Oh, help me with this one. Somebody say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Verse 7. Go ahead. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful For day. every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. All he means is that... In your heart, in your thought, 
you must make a decision of what you want to do to the Lord. Amen? And then he said, it should not be something that you will do with a grudge, with a murmur, or with complaint. Hallelujah. It's not when, like, you know, I remember when we were little, we go to, to church. My mom, when we arrive, when we are at church, then she's looking in a purse. If she can find like a saint franc. <laughs> A coins. <laughs> Meanwhile, in her purse, there was le billet de 10 mil. Like a big, big uh, $100. But she's looking for the coin. And she, she ain't finding it. She has purpose in her heart. From all the 10 mil she has, you're going to give a coin. To this day, she still struggle. Lord says, He loveth the cheerful giver. You, you, you do not, you, you cannot rob God. You feel what I'm saying? You cannot rob God. You cannot rob God. He placed his law of increase in motion. And that law of increase, he does not twist it because of somebody. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? That law of increase is set in motion. Whosoever step into it, amen, increase. Let me, let me tell you something. Somebody will tell to himself, but I don't even have anything. What shall I give? Hi, God knows you don't have anything. He does not ask you to, to give what you don't have. But you have something and then you say, I don't have. Then you are a robber. So if you don't have anything, what you have is what you give. Do you have feet? Do you have mouth? Tell to somebody about the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound, abound towards you, that he, <laughs> always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord says... That when you have followed those simple principles, that he will make grace abound towards you. That so that having always sufficiency in all things, you may continually be able to abound into every work. <laughs> Lord Jesus. If today you broke, tomorrow you have. Today you broke, tomorrow you have. It means you have not followed this principle. Because it says, always having all sufficiency in all things, that you also may be able to continue to do the good work. That's the wealth part. Now the spiritual part of the word. Let's go back to Luke. And then we will finish with that. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Verse 9. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when he fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Again. Make sure that the, even as you go out to take from the unfaithful, to take from the unrighteous, make sure that you don't use this for anything else but for the glory of God. Hallelujah. So that that good work that you do may also speak. Hallelujah. Continue. 
Verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least. He that is faithful in which that is least. Is faithful also in much. Amen. Amen. Do you know that God knows you? <laughs> he gives you $10,000. And you give him $100. And then you say, Lord, when you bless me, I'll bless you. You say that child. <laughs> Hallelujah. For he says that he knows that if you are faithful in least, you will also be faithful in much. Your faithfulness is in every same good thing that concerns your life. It's not only in prayer. It's not only in fasting, it's not only in reading, it's in everything that concerns you and your life. How much faithful are you to the Lord Jesus in everything? How much faithful are you in this kingdom in everything? As I said last time, you want the fire, now we get in the spiritual. You want the fire, you need to put in the sacrifice, amen? You won't see the fire of God in your life, a renewal, you must put in the sacrifice. Which sacrifice do you bring at the altar? You see, some of you, you came this Sunday. There was no even expectation in your heart. Nothing. You just took yourself, you came. <laughs> You're missing. All you know is that, hey, today is Sunday. Hey, I go to church. <laughs> if I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is no expectation in your heart. And you want to see God move, but you have made yourself acquainted to him. See, when you come in the presence of God, Without preparing yourself. Oh, it's difficult for you to take off. You know what I'm saying? It's very difficult for you to take off. I'm talking about spiritually. Do not become a religious. Hallelujah. Do not be religious. You have to have an expectation in your heart that is causing you to go in, like you, you are going to consult with the Lord. Lord, what are you going to tell me today? What are you, are you going to show me today? You come with your container. You say, Lord, I'm ready to receive. But you come. You arrive. You left your the container home. And then when, when there is a rain of blessing, eh, my container is home. I, I'm coming, oh Lord. <laughs> yeah, when you come back, the rain is over. <laughs> and this is the worst part. The worst part, when the Lord says, I will bless you, you say amen, but you're not even ready to receive because you did not prepare to come to receive it. Somebody say understanding the reality of spiritual life. Let me speak to you about that lady. She was a pagan. The widow of Zarepta. The widow of Zarepta, she has nothing. Amen? She was not a child of God. She was not among the covenanted children of Israel. You got to understand that. But she understood the principle of increase. How 
my shoe who is born again by the Holy Ghost. You see me sing it. She understood that even if she does not know the God of Israel, she has perceived that that man is a man of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she said, upon thy word, I will function. By the time she realized, listen, he told her, what you have, cook it and give to me first. No, no way they're born again Christian. Hmm. There's bonbon pastor. <laughs> There's bonbon prophet. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Sugar pastor, sugar prophet. Mm, this church, they talk about money too much. Mm, they're always asking about giving. Mm, first of all, we don't do that anyway. But even we do, it has nothing to do with you or us. It has to do with the principle. You want to see it, you want to show it. Does it make sense? If you harden your heart to the principle of God... Do you really believe he's going to bless you anyway? I, I don't know. It pains me to see that in my lifetime, God is raising army and a warrior. I'm, I'm seeing in my own eyes, God is expending wealth. And then I'm asking to myself, Lord, how many people among us are going to get it? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying God in my own eyes is spending wealth. So if you aren't faithful in the least, The Lord says, you will not be faithful in much. A child of God should start by recognizing his sin. Pray, repent, and change. A child of the devil, we say, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A child of God who recognizes his own fault before the Lord. He's convicted by the Holy Ghost quickly. He pray, he repent, he change. That lady, she understood. She, the guy said, give me first. And she said, but that's all I have. And she said, listen, what I have is that I'm going to take it to go for my son and I, and then we're going to die. This is what it means. Let me explain to you. We were having a situation where God told us, he told me to build a house, right? And then they gave me 1000 And that 1000 was supposed to one thousand dollar. It was supposed to be the money I had to use to make a deposit in order to start the paperwork for building the house. Listen very carefully. And suddenly here comes a brother in the Lord. I don't know how he came. <laughs> Hallelujah! But that brother in the Lord arrived. He arrived and then he asked me, "You know how much? One thousand dollar." And I'm thinking, why did you not ask $999? <laughs> How did he know that I had $1,000? I should have gone to Walmart, broken that $1,000, and then have only $999. And then when he will ask me $1,000, I will say, I don't have. <laughs> How did he know? I cannot tell him I don't have. It will be a lie. 
So all was left to me was to pray. I said, Lord, shall I give? And you see, the devil will not, will not take, tell, you, tell you to give. <laughs> The devil is a thief, okay? He will not tell you give. So the Lord told me, yes, give to him. Caesar. <laughs> you know, every good Christian, when they want to do something, they pray. And when God tells them to do something that is contrary to what they were expecting, they start saying, devil, get away from me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when I finished to chase out my imaginary devil, the Lord came back, give. So I took it and I gave. Before I realized, the Lord blessed us way beyond measure. Before even I thought. He help us have, suddenly there was a money somewhere that was uh, in, a, in a certain workplace. We have no idea of it, just pop up like puff. <laughs> you remember that? We collected thousands of thousands. Sometimes, what God wants to do in your life is beyond the measure of your understanding. So that lady, she said, this is my whole that I have. If I give, I die. If I don't give, I die. She understood the principle. It's better to give. Amen. How much do you want God to operate in your life? How much of your heart of your finances, of your time, of your life, do you give to God? Verse 16, 11. Go ahead. Luke verse 16, 11. If therefore he have not been faithful in the righteous mammon, in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Hallelujah. If things that do not have great value, you cannot even be faithful to it. If things that are lesser, you cannot be faithful to it. The Lord Jesus said, who? will give you true riches. It ought to be a wake-up call for somebody. Amen? Because what he's saying is that I want to give you true riches, but you must demonstrate your faithfulness. Hallelujah. I want to give you True riches. And those riches, they encompass both the spiritual and the physical. In the physical, you will have bountifully so that uh, you continually bountifully never miss a good work. In the spiritual, you will have the fire that is needed so you can keep your love on fire. But if you are unfaithful in the least, how he will commit unto you the true riches. Finish for me, verse 12. Verse 12. And if he have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Hallelujah. You see, listen, the Lord is not willing 
to see you begging and struggling. Are you, you know what I'm saying? The Bible said that I know the plans that I have towards you. To give you a future. Hallelujah. To give you a hope. It's not just so that you struggle. No. Mm -mm. That's not the plans of God. But it says for you to enter those things and those plans, you have to learn to, to develop into your life faithfulness in the least. So that as you learn to develop faithfulness in the least, he will now trust into you or unto you what he has truly planned. Sometimes we are our children. You can buy them toy. And there is a type of toy that you buy for them, but you don't give to them because you think they're not ready. You feel what I'm saying? You can buy that toy and you can just keep that toy. And you are watching what they do and how they operate with what they already have. And based on how they do with what they have, you will now say, okay, now they are ready to handle this type of toy and you will give to them. Does it make sense? Your first place is the kingdom of God. Wherever God plants you, that's where you will eat the grass and grow. Hallelujah. I repeat again. Wherever God plants you, that's where you will eat and grow. But you must demonstrate unto God your faithfulness towards him. And you must invest yourself in his kingdom. The apostle said, they had to focus on the word of God and prayer so that uh, the seven men who were wise, full with the spirit, will go do other work, all for the kingdom. What it means is that they shouldn't have been left alone, do everything for the kingdom. Are you know what I'm saying? There should have been willing soul that would have come in and step in to do and to take on the portion and the charges. Are you know what I'm saying? I pray that the kingdom of God manifests in your heart greatly. And that the mindset of Christ be found also in you. But he says, let the same mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in you. The Lord did not appoint you for crumbs. Amen. The Lord did not appoint you for crumbs. The Lord did not appoint you for crumbs. He appointed you for substance. But you must understand how to acquire it. The Bible says, when a child is given riches, he does not take it. It is somebody else who is a steward who will deal for that for him. Hallelujah. Until the child grows. The Lord wants you to grow in maturity of the kingdom so you can acquire what he has planned for you. He wants you to grow in maturity in his kingdom so that the, what he has already planned for you, you will acquire it because you will not waste it.
You want to see God moving in your life? You must use the principle that God has established. Serve first his kingdom. Be faithful first to him. And willfully and cheerfully honor God. And see him now see that you have matured and he will also give to you what he has planned because you have matured and now you have you are ready to receive share the word with people share the word of god with people Share the word of the Lord Jesus Christ with people. Invite them to your place of abode, which is the church where you go. Do not be a hindrance for the kingdom of God. Tell to somebody, do not be a hindrance for the kingdom of God. Your behavior, your life must reflect the kingdom of the Lord. And I pray that the same Lord who is able to transform you, who is able to quicken you, will keep you ready at all times. I pray that you be not left behind or aside but as you are working in the kingdom of your father that you may hear well done good and faithful servant from now on I give you a challenge do not come empty-ended in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Prepare your heart. Prepare your mind. Prepare your soul. And come with an expectation so you can see God feel your expectation. If you come as you are, you might go as you are. <laughs> come as he wants you to be, and you will go as he has established you to be. With expectation. Hallelujah. Come with expectation in your heart. Become a flame that is assembled with other flame so fire can be. I can tell you how the Lord Jesus was feeling. He goes to his own. First and foremost, he is in his... Uh, no, no, no hometown. In, his, uh, in other places. He goes there. A miracle breaking everywhere. And he sees the power of God. He see, uh, the people see the power of God. And they are glorifying. They see the miracles. And you go to his town. I can imagine how he has in his heart to give them so much. And he arrived. He see them all dry. 
I can imagine the heaviness in his heart. So I pray that the, you break off the limitation and that you create in your heart expectations. You need help. You need deliverance. You need healing. You need freedom. You need finances. You need a wife. You need a husband. You need children. You need whatever. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is made for it. I, I, I hear what I'm saying. The kingdom of the Lord is made for it because it is a manufacture, uh, man, uh, manufacturing building. Um, abode. It is made for it. So that the, what you need, God can supply to all your needs. The Lord repeats that he supply to all your needs. Encourage you. Develop faithfulness. Develop a mind that is ready to be used by the Lord at all times. Speak to other about the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell other about the Lord Jesus Christ. Invite them to the place where you worship. And then you yourself be a good worker of the kingdom. And finally, when you come, come with expectation to trade with the kingdom of God. Because in the kingdom of God, you can trade. You can trade your sorrows for his joy. Are you following? You can trade your poverty for his riches. You can trade your burden for his freedom. There is trade in his kingdom. So I pray that from now on, anytime you enter the assembly of the saints, enter to trade with the kingdom and with the king. The Lord will not be offended because you ask him to trade with him for he say he will supply to all your needs that present the need so you will have the supply Lord I bless your name Lord God for what you do in our lives I bless you for what you do in our midst I bless you Lord God for how you do what you do and I'm asking you that you will uh, quicken each one of us to understand continually your kingdom and Lord God to seek to please thee so Lord God we not be ready to serve mammon but we will be ready to serve you God Lord I pray Lord God that our love for you will not wax cold but it will be fired up continually Lord God, I pray that we will not be numbered amongst those that you will not find faith in, but we will be among those that you will say, indeed, this is my beloved in whom I am well pleased. I pray that each one of us, each one of us, be kindled by your power and that your fire keep us lighten up. I thank you for your grace. Thank you for your strength to continue and to advance. I pray that you bless us 